Ela vai que eu capturo. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Liliana, Lourdes, Olga, Dalila, Gabriela. Hello, Liliana. Ingrid, Lourdes. Good evening, teacher. And Juan Carlos. Chris is just getting into. Good evening. Hello, hello. So, how was your weekend? How was it? How was Saturday and Sunday? Good? Any problem? Good teacher. Excellent. So I hope you have been studying English a lot. Let's wait a little bit. We are still missing some people. Not so much. Not so much, Christian. Not so much, but uh, I remember. You remember something. something. Uh, what do you remember? What did you learn during the weekend? I used to. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking about that. I guess too. You've been thinking about I used old to, memories. Used to. Old memories, good. Okay, actually. Songs, yeah, songs. Actually, the last time we were talking about the way to use used to. And you told uh, people about some experiences. Or some activities you used to do in the past. Okay, interesting. But I can I I I was in the last class. Ah, you were not. You didn't get into the last class. No, teacher. No, you couldn't. Can't. You couldn't. Okay, I will check list attendance. Uh, I oh, I'm sorry to know about it. Okay. We check list attendance and we're gonna start with the activity for tonight. Now, welcome to the English class. This is the second week, and I hope that you can you you take advantage of this time and that you learned a little bit more about English. I remember that we also had some review about the past form of regular verbs and their pronunciation. Alejandra Maria. Aristides. Carlos David. Cesar. Present teacher. Claudia Margarita. Present. Oh, Claudia Margarita. Concepción de Lourdes. Present teacher. Dalila. Present teacher. Elena Marisol. Present teacher. Um, teacher. Tell me. Este día voy a ser de oyente. Okay. Thanks for letting me know about it. Gabriela. Thank you. Okay. Gabriela Noemi. Present teacher. Idalia. Present. Iliana. Iliana Janet. Ingrid Morena. Present teacher. Juan Carlos. I'm here, teacher. Crisia Morena. I'm here. 
Liliana. Present. María Magdalena. Present teacher. Olga Lisset. Present teacher. Rina Margarita. Teacher. Hi. And Wendy Beatriz. Okay, Okay, remember that at the end I will check list at the end a second time. Well, let us get started. Uh, tonight, we're going to study a little about indirect questions. And also, we're going to see some information about a topic that we are starting tomorrow. Okay, so I will share the, the screen so that you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to go directly to the topic. You know, we only have 60 minutes and we need to uh, to see what's what's going on right here. Now, indirect question. The last time we were talking about countable and uncountable nouns and also about expressions of quantity. You prepared a presentation about certain problems people may face in a city and to provide possible solution. But tonight, we're going to see indirect questions. Uh, before seeing the video, we're going to check some info that I had just cutting over here about what is the topical about indirect questions. And we're going to see this conversation. Can somebody help me to read this? Anybody in the group, please? Me, teacher. Okay, uh, Cesar, right? Yes. Okay, Cesar, go ahead. Excuse me, could you tell me where, where the nearest station is? All right, so what do we have there? What kind of extra structure do we have here? Is that a positive statement, a negative statement, a question? It's a question. It's a question, right? It's very simple. How do we know it? We have a question mark at the end. And but what am I asking you about it? If, if I know it is a very simple question to be answered, is because this is a type of question that we're going to study tonight. Now, what is the topic? Indirect questions. Indirect question. So this is an example. This is an example of it. Now, second person, can somebody else help me to read? Anybody else? Uh, thank you, Idalia. Idalia, go ahead. Certainly, it's along that road on the right. All right. Certainly, it's along that road on the right. No questions? No. Question. What else? Anybody else? Thank you. Okay, Juan Carlos. And do you, uh, thank you, thank you. And do you know if there are a supermarket near here? Take a look at this info. Okay. As you, as you remember in the first part, the verb to be was at the, at the end, right? You know here, I want you to notice about the position of that verb. Person in the street. True teacher. Yes, there one next to the statue. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much for, for your help. Now it says, I use indirect question when I'm asking for help in the street because they are very polite. Indirect question start with a phrase like, could, could you tell me, or do you know? 
for example, and look at it, direct question. Where's the bank? That is direct. In direct question, we have an expression that is introduced by saying, could you? Could you what? Could you tell me where the bank is? And notice that in the indirect question, I put the verb is after the subject, the bank. This way. In the same way as I do with the normal positive statement, the bank is over there. But in the indirect question, I put the verb is before the subject, the bank. This is called inversion. Now, what do you mean by inversion, teacher? Well, if you see over here, uh, in this part, you see the you see the converse. I mean, you see the um, the question by having the verb to be as if you were affirming, because normally, normally, a direct question goes like this. Where is the bank? That is a direct. But when you have an indirect question, they say, you introduce the question by using like, could you or do you know, etc. And then you have actually the question over here, where the bank is. I don't know if you got it. I don't know if you, if you got it. Is yes, it yes, I got yeah, it. Is it clear, it's right? Clear. Yes. Okay, so it is not that complicated. We have just no questions. Uh, we're going to see a couple of examples. So in like the one that is Spanish. Now, this is direct. Indirect? Can you tell me if he is Spanish? Now, what is inversion? You have first yes. is he. But in the is, indirect question, is. you have he is. As if you were affirming. Now, can you see the inversion? Is he? He is. Is he Spanish? Can you tell me if he is Spanish? Now, first example. Second example. Present continuous. Is the restaurant closing now? Can you tell me if the restaurant is closing now? Is the difference? Is at the beginning? Yes, yes. Is as if you were filming. You also have a direct question in different tenses. Present continuous, simple pass of the verb to be. Past continuous, present perfect. Present perfect continuous, past perfect, past perfect continuous. Future with simple, with will. Future simple with going to. Future of continue, future perfect. Future perfect continue, modal verse. And example about it, should we start now? Can you tell me if we should start now? So, we also have present simple with any very except the verb to be. Another verb, I mean, Another verb rather than the verb to be. In this case, we're going to go by using the auxiliary does. Does David live in London? Can you tell me if David lives? And over here is where you need to pay special attention, right? Over here is where you need to, to pay special attention. Because we are using simple present. You know? Now, does, so here you have, does David leave? Because, you know, it's third person singular. And you have David leaves as if you were affirming because you don't have any, any I mean, any auxiliary in here. Simple or difficult? Difficult 
or simple? No. And a little confused. A little confusing. Okay, and... now. Especially with the with the with the other tenses, right? Because over here we have present simple. And over here we have simple past. And over here we have well, there are the, some other tenses like uh the verb to be but double h question words uh well i will try to clarify doubt now any doubts do you have any doubt about direct indirect questions so what is the difference que es lo que observamos acá dice que es presente simple arriba vimos el verbo be Aquí vamos a usar presente simple de cualquier otro verbo excepto el verbo be. Ah, ¿Cuál verbo tenemos acá? Live. Hey, does David live in London? Da David vive en London. Ahora, esa es una direct question. ¿Cómo Vamos a identificar la indirect. Las And indirect you... emp empiezan por una frase que las introduce. Como por ejemplo, can you tell me? Do you know? Ok, do you know? Can you tell me if? Can you tell me if? Hasta aquí empieza la, la frase que lo introduce. Ahora, David, fíjense bien, David lives in London. Mejor voy a borrar todo eso. ¿no? Vale. David lives in London. David lives in London. Si yo le quito el signo de interrogación, ¿qué tipo de oración tengo? Mm. Una, una oración <coughs> afirmativa en presente simple. Exacto. ¿Y acaso hacemos preguntas así? No, ¿verdad? Las preguntas tienen un orden. Si es presente simple, inicia con auxiliar do or does. De ahí David y de ahí el verbo en su forma base. Pero acá está conjugado en tercera persona. Ok, entonces esa es la diferencia. Can you tell me if David lives in London? Sigue siendo una pregunta, ¿no? Ahora, let's see. Let's see in the past. Veamos qué otro tiempo viene por acá. Past simple. Veamos el pasado simple. Did Amanda, did, auxiliar did, que es pasado. Did Amanda call? El verbo es su forma más. Did Amanda call yesterday? Habló, marcó Amanda ayer. Ahora, vamos con la indirect. La frase introductoria. Can you tell me if Amanda called? Miren el verbo cómo está. Y miren cómo está aquí. Aquí ya sabemos que es por el auxiliar. Pero acá... Ya sabemos que también es porque es una indirect question. Como si estuviésemos afirmando, ¿eh? Amanda called John yesterday. ¿Pero qué es lo que lo hace una pregunta? Ah, es la frase introductoria. Can you tell me if Amanda called, yesterday, called John yesterday? No. A little bit cleaner? ¿Un poco más claro? Yes. All right, so let's go over the next part. Double H question. Now I will, I will switch into English fully. Pay attention. We also have double H question with uh, the verb to be in the present. Why is he happy? Why is he unhappy? Can you tell me why? And look at it, what I was telling you, right? He is unhappy. Present continue. When is the restaurant closing? Can you tell me when the restaurant is closing? Past simple would be. Why was it late for the meeting? 
Can you tell me why he was late for the meeting? And so on. So we're gonna have like a, we're gonna solve an exercise. They so have future, future perfect, different tenses, okay? Where does David live? Can you tell me where David lives? So do we study that? And we're gonna go over some exercises, okay? Nos va a compartir esos ejercicios, teacher? Yeah, of course, of course. Gracias. Of okay. course, thank you for remembering. Go there and if you want, copy the link and share it in the in the WhatsApp group. That will be perfect. Okay? So you have different exercises over here. We try indirect question with simple present, with the past, and also with the modal verbs. So we're gonna try one of this one. Vamos a probar con uno de estos. So exercise one. Como diría, where does where does she play tennis? Can can you tell me where she plays tennis? Great. Can you tell me where she plays tennis? Good. Excellent. Number two. Does he does he live in Paris? Can you tell me? He lives in Paris. Uh, but you are forgetting about something. Can you tell me? If if he lives. If, if, right? If if, if, if he lives if, if in Paris. Hey, can you tell me if he lives in Paris? Good. Number three. Is she hungry? Do you know... If she is hungry. Great. Okay, well, over here, it, it's okay. Do you know, or can you tell me it's all right? If she yeah. is hungry, good. What is this? Can you tell me what this is? What this is? Good. Do they work in, in Canada? Can you tell me if they work in Canada? Can you tell me if they work in Canada? When do John and Luke meet? Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Uh, can can you tell me when John and Luke meet? All right. Is he a lawyer? Can you tell me if he is a lawyer. Can you tell me if he is a lawyer? Good. Number eight. When is the party? Could you tell me when the party is? Can you tell me when the party is? Do they often go out? Can you no. tell me if they often go out? Can you tell me if they often go out? Number 10, this is the last one. No, we're missing a little bit. What does what does he do at the weekend? Can you tell me? He do at the weekend. Mm, not really, Idalia. Mm, 
Can you tell me what he do at the week? Not Can really. you tell me what he does, he does at the weekend? Okay, Cesar, let us listen to Idalia. Idalia? Margarita? You tell me if he does at the weekend? Mm. Now, somebody said it, right? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what he does? He does. Somebody said it, right? Let's see if, it, if that is correct. Can you tell me what he does at the weekend? Number Can 11. You tell me what? Now, if you have questions, then you, you ask questions about indirect weekend. Uh, weekend. Are the children on holiday this weekend? Can you tell me if the children are on the holiday this week? Can you tell me if the children are on holiday this week? Cool. Wow, so they are endless, right? So they are like 15, so wow, a lot of 20. We have 20 exercises. So I will share, you, you continue, you can continue by your own later. It's because I have some other information. We share the link also about this exercise. And actually I think it is in the same page I share at the beginning. So, but you have there. Now, any question about indirect questions? Tienen preguntas al respecto? No questions? No. No. Okay, we're gonna try some exercises in the simple path form. We're gonna try to solve like five or seven exercises with the pass. Okay, simple pass, indirect question. Exercise two, review. Now, now, over here is different because we're dealing with simple past. Did she go out last night? Indirect? ¿Qué me dice la, la indirecta? El verbo cambia el pasado, ¿verdad? O sea, go. Can, can you team... Can you tell can you tell me if she went off last night? Ah, okay. So mm -hmm. yes, remember as if you were affirming, como si estuvieran afirmando la, esa parte. So look, do you know if she went down last night? When the pass of go went. Number two. Where did she meet her brother? Uh, do you know is she meet her brother? Is is yes if correct or incorrect? Can you tell me? Do you know? Ah, do you know? Um, do you know where she met her brother? Okay. Do you know where she met her brother? Let's see. Good. Number three. How was the film? How was the film? How was the film? Mm. 
Can you tell me, do you know? Uh huh. How? Do you know? Do you know? Um, how the field work? No. How the film? How the film work? Was. Was. Yeah. Hey, can you tell me how the film was? Let's see if we. If... Uh, Take a look at it. Do you know how the film was? Was David the first to arrive? Was David the first to arrive? Do you know if, if David was the first to arrive? Do you know if... <laughs> Do you know? They, uh, should know. David? No. David, do you know if David was no. the first to arrive? Do you know if David was the first to arrive? No. Good. Did Lucy David work at home yesterday? The first... Did Lucy, Lucy work? work? Mm -hmm. Lucy worked at home yesterday. Good. So we're going to finish right here. Uh, do you know if Lucy worked at home yesterday? Okay. Now we share also this link so that you can complete all the exercises at home. Okay. El ejercicio va a estar terminado cuando ustedes lo elaboren en casa con, con paciencia, con que lo vayan este. Um, identificando cómo en realidad va la indirect question, porque son varios, miren. Si nos dedicamos a hacer todos estos ejercicios, no nos va a alcanzar el tiempo para ver qué es lo que tiene la plataforma. Así que vámonos a la plataforma. Let's see. We have a video in here. Pero espérense, antes de ponerlo, me voy a asegurar del audio. Okay. Hi everyone. By the end of this. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let us take a look at this, yes. please. Hey. I don't listen. Do you? To ask and answer mm -hmm. indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs across from the duty free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or... Excuse me. It's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Mm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. 
what we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions and the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions so for example if I say where's the bank it's less polite than if I say could you tell me where the bank is and what we're gonna learn is we're gonna learn some rules that we're gonna follow in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions we're gonna learn how to do it with the verb to be and we're also gonna learn how to change WH questions with either do or did now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here what we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions and let me propose a formula on how to do this if you will so we want to turn the question where is the bank into an indirect question and you tell me all right and then this is going to be followed by a wh word in this case it happens to be where but it could be any other wh word for example it could be what time how often when etc any kind of wh word is what we're going to include here so could you tell me and in this case i'll ask where this is going to be followed by by the subject so in this case it happens to be the bank where the bank and then finally we're, we're gonna include the verb so in this case could you tell me where the bank is and just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here I'm gonna go ahead and play with the colors for now now let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom where are the restrooms that's the direct question what we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question and you can do that in different ways for example you can do that by asking do you know okay or using another model verse so in this case I'm gonna propose in using this um, polite way of doing it okay so I'm basically just gonna copy that so you can see that it's the, basically the same pattern that we're following we have could you tell me and that follows a WH word so in this case where okay so the subject is what's gonna change now and instead of saying the bank we're not gonna say the restrooms and then it's gonna follow the verse so in this case it happens to be that since restrooms are plural then we're gonna use the verb to be are instead of the verb to be is and um, well um, the phrase here could change as I mentioned just like we have it there on the book do you know where the restrooms are and basically we're gonna follow the same pattern for the questions that you see towards the bottom the only difference here is that we're no longer using the verb to be we're using other verbs and we could be talking about the present we could be talking about the past and that's what it means by either do or did so let's try to make sense of those as well so in this case it's a similar pattern if you will how often do the buses leave okay what we want to do is we want to be able to change this question into an indirect question and again we can use the same pattern that you see here so for I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this previous one that you see there so that you can see that uh, nothing changes or just a few things will change so in this case could you tell me I mean that's similar thing could you tell me and we're gonna use uh, the uh, WH question so in this case is gonna be how often all right and then that is followed by the subject so in this case the subject is the buses and then that is followed by the verb and so in this case it's no longer the verb to be but now it's the verb leave how often do the buses leave could you tell me how often the buses leave let's try to make sense of the other questions that you see there towards the bottom so in this case what we want to do is 
we want to use a polite way of asking. So you can ask in the form of, could you tell me? Do you know? Can you tell me? Um, and then it just repeats itself with do you know. So in this case, we're going to use do you know. That's the second question there. Do you know what time the bank opens? So let me go ahead and write that example now. Do you know? That follows the WH word. So in this case, is what time? Then that follows the subject. And one thing that I want you to notice here is that in our indirect question, we remove the auxiliary verb. So we don't include does or do. It no longer exists in our indirect question. Do you know what time the bank opens? And the other thing that happens here is that the verb in this case will need to have an S. And that's because since we don't have an auxiliary verb and the subject of the verb is singular and we're talking in the present, therefore we need an S as you can see there. And uh, well, let's do the last one there. Uh, what, um, when did flight 566 arrive? So in that case, um, the question could be, do you know? And the WH word is when. And uh, the subject is flight 566. And in this case, we have to change the verb to the past because we're not, we're not using an auxiliary. Uh, like we're using the auxiliary, when did fly 566 arrive? In this case, this verb is in the present, but that's because we're using the auxiliary did. So in this case, since we removed that auxiliary verb that I mentioned, we need to change that verb to the past form. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to practice the concepts that we talked about. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pose some questions here. These are common questions that people ask whenever they visit another country, another city, a place you're not familiar with. What are those questions? For example, how much do taxes cost? And remember that our goal is to change these direct questions into indirect questions. And you're going to follow this formula that I gave you. So how much do taxes cost? Well, you're going to use do you know or could you tell me or can you tell me and then follow this formula follow this all right so this is the second time you you hear like uh, the same uh, information okay so we have studied the same info twice in the same class so this formula we're going to see something over here in the in the exercise and based on what we have just studied we're going to answer a question for example could you tell me where the nearest atm is what is like the best option over here the first option the first is is it's it's on upstairs across upstairs across from the duty from free upstairs. shop from the duty free shop. based on the listening activity from the video answer the following question how often do buses run do the buses run second option they run every 20 minutes or so Based on the listening activity from the video, answer the following questions. What other information does Eric ask for? Number three, the, the, cost, the, cost, the cost of the above to the city. Okay, number four, how will you transform the following sentence into an indirect question? Where is the nearest internet cafe? The first. Could you tell me where the nearest internet cafe is? Number five, uh, rephrase the following question as indirect question. How late do the buses run? Mm. 
Number three. Do you know how late the yes. bus run? Do you know how late the bus the buses run? Pretty good. All right. So what well, this is this is actually everything related to in to direct and indirect questions. Okay. Now uh, well this is this is the topic for tomorrow. This is gonna be an an, an a homework for you to study. Okay, to study this uh, activity, okay, and also the 3.3 .3 and also, uh, no, this is the 3.1 the and the 3.4, because we're going to study about adjectives and nouns, comparison with adjectives and nouns. Okay, so what are we going to do now with the information we, we have studied so far? Let us do something. Let me see. We still have like 15 minutes. Uh, the topic, it's been about asking questions related to, this, to the city, right? So uh, can you tell me where the bank is? Do you know, do you know where the church is, etc.? So do me the favor to create five sentences, five questions, five indirect questions please because you are going to use them we're going to try to start a conversation uh, when when you get the five indirect questions okay you can create uh, uh, five indirect questions any things right present past five questions Five indirect questions. Now, let me know when you finish, please. When you get the five questions, five indirect questions.
Let me know when you finish, please. Not yet. Not yet. I think Cesar already finished, right? Remember to activate your camera, people. It's important for me to see you with your camera on. Thank you, Dalila. Thank you, Juan Carlos. What about the rest? Thank you, Gabriela. Thank you, Lourdes. Thank you, Ileana. Well, I don't know. Do you have, if you, if you do not, I mean, let me see the ones that you got, Caesar, Caesar. Questions? Can you tell me if she ran in the afternoon? Hey, can you tell me if she runs in the afternoon? Okay. Uh, do you know where the supermarket is? Excellent. Can you tell me if the bus arrives? Arrives, okay. Can you tell me where the restaurant is? Okay, Idalia, thank you. No more? Well, we have been working with this uh with this topic tonight. It doesn't it doesn't mean that tomorrow we're not gonna use it. We don't know if the day after tomorrow we're gonna use this grammar, but sooner or later we're gonna use it. That is for sure, right? Especially because it's, it tells us that we use indirect question to sound more polite. Okay? To sound more polite. Now, listen, I will share something that I want you to be aware of. Um, Teacher, I have Hello. two examples. Tell me, please. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, can you tell me if it is going to snow tomorrow? Can you tell me mm -hmm. if it is going to snow tomorrow? Good. Uh, do you know if the cinema is opening now? It's opening now? Yeah. It's all right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for sharing those. Now, listen. Recuérdense que esta semana es importantísima porque primero, bueno, estamos en la sección oh, sorry. Yeah, sección 3, semana 2, ¿verdad? Entonces, en esta semana tenemos el midterm. Ok. Recuérdense que hay que hacer este examen esta semana. Lo hacen cuando ustedes si gustan empezarlo ahora lo pueden empezar. Si gustan terminarlo ahora lo pueden terminar. Eso depende de ustedes. Pero al finalizar la semana o miércoles o a más tardar jueves esto tiene que estar terminado. ¿Ok? So, ¿Preguntas sobre el tema de esta noche? No. Bueno, voy a pasar lista entonces y luego vemos cómo cerramos la sesión. Alejandra María. Aristide Sotoniel. Carlos David. Present teacher. Cesar. Present teacher. Claudia Margarita. Present. Lourdes. Present teacher. Dalila. 
Present teacher. Elena. Present. Gabriela Noemi. Present teacher. Idalia. Present. Present. Ileana Janet. Present teacher. Ingrid. Present teacher. Juan Carlos. I hear teacher. Crisia Morena. Present. Liliana eh, Mina. Present. Maria Magdalena. Present teacher. Olga Lisset. Present teacher. Rina Margarita. Present teacher. Wendy Beatriz. Ok, Alejandra María. Aristi de Jotoniel. Okay, so we're done with it. So, any questions, people? ¿Cómo estuvo el tema de esta noche? Easy. Very easy. Okay. That's fantastic. When you say easy, I consider that's well, I, I think that the only, the only, uh, I mean, I think the only aspect that you need to work a little bit about this topic is related to the different tenses, right? Por eso les compartí el enlace con diferentes tiempos. Porque hay, eh, la podemos crear en presente progresivo, pasado, simple futuro, presente perfecto, entonces es bueno que nosotros veamos cómo, cómo crear indirect questions con todos los tiempos. ¿Verdad? Eso sería prácticamente lo, lo único que yo les recomendaría. En realidad el tema no está complicado, sino más bien a este de practicarlo. Y con la práctica seguramente pues vamos a lograr manejar esos tiempos con esas con esas expresiones de indirect questions para el día de mañana ya les dije verdad evaluation with adjectives and nouns en comparison with adjectives and nouns estos dos videos necesito que los vean antes de entrar a la clase ¿De acuerdo? Yes, teacher. Ok. Any, qu any question? No. Now, uh, mañana vamos a crear eh, una conversación y pues quiero que vayamos agregando como mm, información que hemos venido estudiando, no solo ahora, sino en los días anteriores. Quiero, recuérdense que yo siempre estoy evaluando pronunciación. Si ya vimos, por ejemplo, el pasado de los verbos regulares, hay que usarlos. Hay que usarlos y de tal manera de que me demuestren que ya internalizaron cómo, cómo es la pronunciación, las reglas de los verbos regulares. Ok. Si ya vimos indirect questions, ok, hay que, hay que usar las indirect questions en, las, en la conversación que vamos a crear mañana. Si vamos a ver, por ejemplo, adjetivos, hay que utilizarlos también. Pero eso será el día de mañana, si Dios permite. So, any questions? No doubts? No comments? No, teacher. No. Vale. Recuérdense que hay una tarea que, que siempre la vamos a tener presente y eso es aprenderse una frase diaria, por lo menos una frase diaria en inglés. Puede ser una, una quote, a daily quote, una frase motivacional en inglés que ustedes no quieran compartir. Puede ser una frase que a ustedes pues, les dio curiosidad saber qué es lo que significaba en alguna canción o en algo y pues nos la comparten acá 
¿ok? Sin necesidad de estar leyendo, por supuesto. ¿Ok? Entonces, nos vemos mañana, si Dios permite. Thank sí. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. See you. See you.